Could you advise me regarding the five times prayers, their benefits, and if one is in praying on time, what punishment will he get? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one hadith, have you guys seen somebody who lives by the river where he washes in the river five times a day? Would he still have any impurities against his body afterward? They said, of course not. He said, similarly, the five daily prayers, they wash off sins on a regular basis. And in another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, الصلوات الخمس the five daily prayers and what is in between is a ransom and an expiation for the sins which were committed in between you prayed Fajr then you went to work you indulge in vain talk you looked uh, to what Allah has forbidden you heard what Allah uh, uh, has forbidden and so on then you made proper wudu and you went to pray Dhuhr that erases the sins which he did not pay attention to between Fajr and Dhuhr, then between Dhuhr and Asr, and so on. The five daily prayers are expiations for the sins which are committed in between. Then, of course, if the person were to make a perfect ablution, then walk to the masjid to attend the prayer congregation, then attends the prayer and afterward sits for a few minutes to make khitam salah Subhanallah, the reward is beyond imagination. Can you imagine that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith which is narrated by Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him, <coughs> that when you make this khitam al-salah, the finishing of the prayer, ten times subhanallah, likewise alhamdulillah, likewise Allahu Akbar, that's theory, for each prayer after if each fard, then times five, that's 150. The total, as the Prophet ﷺ said, 1,500 good deeds for the scale of your hasanat. And also he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the same hadith, whenever you finish the prayer and you remain in the musalla, in the same place to make istighfar and khitam salah the angels will surround you and will continue praying for you. What do they say? They say, Allahumma aghfir lah, Allahumma arham. Oh Allah, forgive him his sins. Oh Allah, have mercy on him. We can talk about the virtues of the prayer forever. But what you need to know here that those who do not pray would not be only deprived from all of the, the previous reward, but furthermore, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, the major difference between us as, as Muslims and others is the prayer. فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدْ كَفَرْ The person who does not pray is not a Muslim. As far as postponing the prayer from its fixed time, there is a difference between delaying the prayer, but you still offer it before the end of its time, before the adhan of the following prayer, and for Isha before midnight, and for Fajr before sunrise. It is still valid, but it is not the best. The best, as the Prophet ﷺ was asked in one hadith, O Prophet of Allah, what is the best deed? He said, As-salatu li waqtiha, to pray right on time once the prayer, the fourth prayer is due. But for those who delay it until its time is out, Allah the Almighty said about them in Surah Maryam, فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا غَيْ is a valley in hell. May Allah protect all of us. Why? As a result of delaying the prayer from its fixed time. And it would be considered qadā. Makeup. How awful that you have an appointment with Allah the Almighty and you miss it and you miss it deliberately. Remember, the best deed is to pray uh, on time.